for the sake of your call, for the sake of your ministry, your destiny. Sometimes the things that you go through in your life is because of your calling. Those of you that know the Lord and are following after the Lord, I'm here to really encourage you to continue on your walk and on your path with the Lord. It can be difficult, ups, downs, highs and lows, but no matter what, never give up. Sometimes you may go through certain things in your life, you may revisit certain things in your life, and you may wonder, Lord, why do I keep going through this? Some people you go through rejection. Some people you go through where you're not in the social circles. Other times you go through things where you may be in the social circles, but you just really keep encountering certain things. And especially when you're standing for Christ. Now, sometimes before that, you will experience things coming up in your life and you're, you're thinking and wondering, Lord, why do I keep revisiting this? Why does this thing keep happening to me? And guys, I want you to know that people make choices to do things in their lives. They make choices whether to hurt you, harm you, do you wrong. It's never that God puts it in their heart to do evil towards you, but they choose to do wrong. Every single step and every single decision a person makes towards you, whether to harm you or to do to do right those things if they choose to do good so be it if they choose to do wrong that offense that they do towards you it may hurt you may go through some go through some things but God's going to take that that hurt and that pain the rejection the things that they have done and if you stick with him it can be used as a way for you to be able to help other people you will first be strengthened you will first be healed and restored. And then God will use you to lead others out. You see, Moses had a situation. He had some devastating things that occurred in his life. And he ended up being sent away by his mother to save his life. And he was raised in the house of Egypt. And at some point, he was sent away. Another situation happened where he ended up taking someone's life that was picking on and abusing a Hebrew slave. And so he ended up running away and he went away for a while. And during that time of him being away and being in the presence of the Lord and being restored, he was sent back to now help those who are held captive. And sometimes it's hard for us to put our mind around those things. Jesus came, born, left the throne, of God came down born in flesh he didn't have to do that he could have came down from the sky in all his glory but he was born in flesh he walked the walk he experienced some things he was rejected he was reviled his life was in danger at some point he had to go with Joseph and Mary and live in Egypt for a while and he he grew up and experienced many different things and ultimately he was rejected and hurt and mistreated and called crazy. He was accepted by some. He was mocked and scorned by others. Then he was beaten and crucified, falsely, falsely uh, accused, ridiculed, mocked, even while he was on the cross. But he came for a purpose and he's gone back to the father. And he's going to come back to collect us who are walking our own path. But will you pass? Will you make it? Will you be able to carry out the assignment? You're not going to be able to do it if you're in your feelings and if you're in your emotions and you allow yourself to become overcome with guilt. I'm sorry, overcome with hurt and pain and bitterness. It's only through God taking to him your concerns, your anger, all those things that he's going to be able to help you and show you that the things that you have gone through was for a purpose. It's to help others. It's your call. You're going to overcome it and you're going to be able to help others to overcome. You're going to be able to stand before God and hear, well done. There's a time in my life I kept on going through certain things. I kept on experiencing opposition from certain people in certain positions while I was in the military. And I didn't understand why. I was doing my job. I was doing the things that I need to do. I wasn't slacking off. 
I wasn't a troublemaker. I had fun, partied with my friends and everything, hung out, knew a lot of people, but I kept experiencing certain things over and over and over again. I want to say there might have been two or three duty stations where everything was fine, but in between that, I will always experience this certain opposition where I always found myself having to fight, having to stand up for myself or standing up for other people. And we're talking about people ranks above me. But one thing I learned, I remember one thing my father told me very early when I joined the military was you need to know the regulations. You need to know the military laws, customs, courtesies, rules, DA PAMs, regulations, so that you don't do anything that you're not supposed to do and you'll always understand what your, you know, what your rights are or what the regulations are, the code of conduct for everyone. And that was precious and that was re that's what really helped me a lot. But for a long time I would wonder, I was like, Lord, why do I keep experiencing this stuff? And years later, I would realize why I went through these things. Because God was building in me a compassion. I always had a compassion for the less fortunate, those who are not being treated right. And I will stand up for them. And I will stand up for myself. And But I learned the thing, I had a humbleness, a willing, willingness to kind of, you know, do my job, do what I need to do, sit back, see and wait, give everyone the opportunity to do what they need to do, sit and talk to people at the lowest level, but I always also had the ability to stand up for what was right. I did not care about being popular. I did not mind swimming upstream. I was gonna do what's right and I did not care what anybody thought about that. So here I am later on in my life, realizing my purpose as I stand for other people. I wondered the things, why would I go through certain things in ministries and in churches that I went through? And sometimes people will make you feel, well, if you keep going from place to place or this happens to you over and over again, you're the problem. And I'll always look at myself. But looking at yourself is one of the ways that you can also be abused by people who are abusing their position and authority that God has placed them in. But you know what's right, you know what's wrong. But I realized the things that I experienced was because God was going to place me here now to be able to pour into other people, to show them the way, to lead them to God and let them know, no, you're not crazy. No, there's nothing wrong with you. No, you're not imagining things and show you how to cultivate a relationship with the Lord so that you are not manipulated. My point is the things that you go through in your life, when you are in Christ and you turn to him, He's going to turn all those things into strength. He's going to turn all those things into a healing bomb that you can use to help other people. How unfair would it seem that Jesus would have been bought, would, been, would have been sent to this earth to be ridiculed and to be beaten and crucified, but yet he served a greater purpose because we should not allow ourselves to focus on things that's going on in the natural, even though to some degree it matters. But think about the end, the reality, the eternity. I am not telling you that God sends people to come into your life and abuse you. An abuser has a has an opportunity, has the choice to do it or not to do it. A person who cheats on you and uses you, they have the choice to do it or not do it. A person that lies on you and berates you, they have a choice to do it or not do it. And in that instance, before they do it, there is a feeling like they shouldn't. The parent that abuses you, the sibling that abuses you, they have a choice to do it or not. And their choice, God will hold them accountable for it. But whatever they do, the offense, now we have a choice to either hold on to it and let it ruin us or let God use that and show us how to walk through that and how to overcome. What pain and hurt and rejection and lies they throw your way, God is going to turn that around. You're not going to be buried, but you can bury yourself. It's very hard to understand things. 
And the deeper your pain, the darker your past, the darker your experiences, the more it is imperative that you know God. Because when you do that, he will show you everything. He will show you the whys, the hows. He will let you see so many things that you're never going to get just sitting there and trying to get answers in the natural. This walk in Christ, you're not going to be able to do it in your own feelings and by your own strength and by, you know, um, what's the word? Just willpower alone. Mind over matter alone. That's not going to help you because it's a spiritual thing. The devil wants us not to make it into heaven. And to enter into the kingdom of God, we cannot do it without Jesus who says in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It's only through his strength, through John 14 and 16, that tells us that the Holy Spirit has come to strengthen us and to guide us and to lead us into all truth. He will help us to do the things that we cannot do in our flesh. I remember being at a hospital, being in a clinic, I worked there. I had worked with a doctor before at another place, another place that I was in, I was stationed at. And I worked with this doctor. We were very close. He was the chief of the clinic and I was the overseer of the entire clinic. And we worked together, we did things together, never slacked off of my job, always did things above board. But then I go to this other place and they de decided to come up with a narrative about me that was not true. And it was so sad to see how people were able to disparage me just by someone saying something. I still continue to help my, hold my head up high and do what I need to do and carry myself in the authority and the position that I'm supposed to have. But it was disheartening one day to see when they had a conference with all the doctors, the doctor that I had worked with all those years, built a rapport with, he saw me. He could not have not seen me because I was one of the I was the key person there along with the other surgeon who was heading up all these doctors that had come from all over the place. He saw me and he walked right by me. He walked right by me as if he hadn't seen me. And it didn't dawn on me because we had built such rapport. I had done nothing wrong, but I went and I saw him and I was like Hey, sir. And I was talking to him, but I could see as he was speaking to me, he was so distant. He was just trying to just hurry up and finish talking to me. And I was like, wow. And then it dawned on me what was going on. Because when he came, he would have to have met with certain people who was already demonizing me. Let's put it like that. Now, thank God I kept my head high. I kept doing the things that I need to do. I humbled myself to the Lord because I'm a natural fighter. I'm a letter writer. I'm that person that's going to go toe to toe and do what I need to do, you know, knowing my rights. But the Lord had told me to humble myself. Don't worry about it, Arlene. Do the things that you need to do. Okay. I know that's well below what you're supposed to be doing, but I want you to do that. And when I did those things, sometime later, the highest person on the very top of the command group, let's just put it like that, called me in his office, sat me down and spoke to me, gave me his ear, let me sit in that office and called in all my accusers and said, tell me what you've told me about her. And you should have seen the shock in their face because they had lied on me. And so I was vindicated in the end. And a lot of those people that made up those lies, I was able to see them, see a lot of things happen to them. A lot of them got demoted. Some of them got sat down. They got caught up in different scandals. What is my point? The things that I went through, I didn't understand. But I also had to see where God saved me out of all of them. My enemies, those who tried to destroy me because I stood up for what was right. For I dared to follow the regulations. For I dared not go along with them to destroy someone else. Because I spoke up for someone they were picking on. The Lord vindicated me out of that. But then it was because of my destiny where he was going to take me for my walk with him. 
And in addition, it shows us something that in the end, those who falsely accuse you, you'll be standing there next to your heavenly father and your accusers will be ashamed because they'll have to face themselves. So I just want to encourage you to stay the course. It's okay that you feel frustrated sometimes. It's okay to express what you feel. Some days you don't want to do anything, but don't stay there. And keep the lines of communication open with your father. The things that you go through is for your purpose. The people that you lose along the way is for your purpose. As you grow closer and closer with God, your relationships, people are going to start to fall away because they can't go higher with you. Jesus had a large mob of people around him all the time, lots of disciples. But at some point, all those people fell away from him because as he got higher and higher, he began to share deeper and deeper things. They could not understand it. So they turned away from him. They thought that he was crazy. They thought that he, he was just, he was the cannibal or something. And, or he was promoting cannibalism. So he was left with 12. And even out of that 12, there were ones who still, one betrayed him, another denied him at some point, but came right back around. They went through their highs and their lows. But what you're going to find is you're going to, people are going to fall away from you as you grow closer to God. The people that were running the race along with you, you're going to begin to see that this person is not completely dedicated to God. You're going to begin to finally hear what they've been saying all along. But when your spiritual ears open up, you're going to realize this person is preaching a false gospel or they, they, they're, they're trying to put in some greasy grace somewhere. You may lose family members. You may lose people who... Your, your boyfriend, you guys, and girlfriends, and whoever, and you guys used to be the lukewarm believers, but when the Lord begins to open your eyes, you'll find there'll be conflict. Sometimes you're going to lose your mom, you're going to lose your dad, you're going to lose your family, you're going to lose your friends. But the Bible tells us in Matthew 19 and 29 that he who has lost mother, father, lands, home, cattle, brother, sister, children, husband, wives, for my sake shall inherit a hundredfold in the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody will lose their family, but some will. Some you have to leave because of the toxicity. Some you have to leave because they continue to break you down that you'll never be able to do the will of God. Some you have to leave because you're just so dependent on them. It's time for you to stand on your own. It's never always that it's a bad thing. And others you have to close the doors because they carry habits of generational destruction that you cannot allow to leak into your lineage. You may be sacrificing some things now. You may feel lonely right now. You may feel like, when I wish I could take my children over here to the relatives and do this and do that like a regular family. But you have to realize you're making a sacrifice now to stop the destructive behaviors that have come down from generation to generation that your family may not be willing to stop doing. And so you are the sacrifice and you're, you're, you're no longer in that circle anymore, but you are giving your own lineage, your children, whether you have them now or you will bring them forth at some point, you are going to change the direction of habits. They will not be exposed to arguments. They're not going to be exposed to constant talking today, not talking tomorrow. They're not going to be exposed to somebody who shows up sometimes and doesn't show up. You don't want your children or your family to get used to a person that will curse them out or curse out their parent, bring chaos around them, or someone that will cut them off when they're mad, or somebody that being used to this toxic on and off relationship, loving a person, being around people that's destructive and rude, you don't want that pattern of behavior to be passed on to them. Seeing you sad and frustrated, overhearing bickering, and fighting in arguments and competition, no. So you may be lonely now. But you are giving them a world where there is none of that chaos around them and peace and you build that and they'll have children and they'll do different things in their lives. And their seed will not know all of that foolishness that you came from or you had to close the door on. There is a method to the madness. God knows what he's doing. So you stay the course. Don't you break down and go back and say, oh, well, you know, like the children of Israel, they'll think about the food and how they used to eat 
under the hand of their slave masters, under the hand of their oppressors. They wanted to go back to that because they were afraid of what was before them. They were afraid of the challenges. They were afraid of the hardships. They were afraid of just things being different. So they'd rather go back. I'll stay enslaved, but at least I'll eat. So you think, you know, well, they'll cuss me out. They'll mistreat me, but at least I have my family. No, it goes be it goes way beyond that. And people may not understand that. People may think that you're a bad child. People may think that oh you're 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 doing wrong things. But you trust God. You didn't imagine all that be that that poor behavior. You didn't imagine the way that they continue to let you down. You didn't imagine the way that you were being done wrong. You've had more than enough years and decades to know this is right. You've been exposed to more than 10, 20, 30, 40 years of the same behaviors to know you have to make that change. So wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you stay the course. You stay rooted and grounded in the Lord because everything you go through, you're going to be able to help somebody else. You're going to stand before the Lord and hear well done. And you'll be rewarded for whatever you lose in this world. You'll gain that and then some. Eyes have not seen nor has it entered into the heart or the minds of man what the Lord has in store for those who love him. You will be rewarded for your loss. You will be rewarded for your pain. And just understand everything you go through. It's not that God has abandoned you. You are just being, you are just experiencing the things that you must experience right now. As you will be a testimony and a person that's going to be able to help others and lead them out of darkness. Pull them out of the places that you've been in. And you're going to even be able to help them through the wisdom of God that he's going to place in you, things that you've never experienced because you were willing to obey the Lord. He will now use you to be able to minister to people and be an effective source of healing to people, even if you've never walked that walk, simply because now the power of God can flow through you because you're willing to yield to him, because you were willing to obey him, because you held on, because you were tenacious, because you never let go. Now your oil will be able to help others through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you stay encouraged. Don't give up. Don't let go. Don't turn back. Don't doubt yourself. Don't question. Don't, don't think, why is, what's wrong with me? Why do I keep experiencing these things? Because God has a purpose for you. So walk in that. You can walk in the purpose or continue to experience certain things when God wants you to move. And now he wants to bring to a place to heal you and to give you understanding and to, get, to give you knowledge and to give you the strength and to give you the ability to go forth in what he has called you to do. All right, guys. God bless.